So here with me today, I have the new iPhone 15 Pro Max. This is the 256 gigabyte blue titanium version, which is in my opinion, the nicest color. And you may have been hearing a lot about this phone recently due to the fact that it records ProRes Apple log footage, which is pretty amazing for a phone. And I've been seeing plenty of comparisons between the footage from this phone and professional level cameras. So today I thought I would talk you through the recording modes, conduct a few little tests, and then hopefully come to the conclusion as to whether or not this phone will be replacing any of our cinema cameras anytime soon. So first off, this is the built-in photo and video app on the iPhone. It's relatively basic and allows you to change between the lenses. So you have 0.5, 1, 2, and 5X. There are four, even though there are only three lenses on the back of the camera, because I'm pretty sure the 2X lens just crops in on the standard 1X lens. You also have an exposure control down here, which is basically like adjusting your ISO. There is a flash control down here, which has flash off, flash on and automatic. I'm just gonna leave it as off. Then at the top, you have the all important ProRes log mode, which switches the camera to a flat color profile, as you can see here. Within ProRes log mode, you only have the options of recording 4K24, 4K30, HD 30 and HD 60. You can also enter the action mode by pressing this button here, which puts you in a 2.8K recording mode. And however, it does require a lot of light for this to function correctly. As you can see, the image has become very grainy and there is a warning at the top asking us to produce more light. However, when in correctly lit situations, the action mode is actually really impressive and offers a gimbal level of stabilization just at a lower resolution. So that is the ProRes log within the built-in iPhone app. However, there is an alternative third-party app which offers way more control than the built-in one and that is the Blackmagic camera app which is available on the App Store. This app has a lot more control available and for example, you can control which lens you want. However, this is also displayed in millimeters so we have the 13 mil, the 24 mil and the 120 mil. You have a way more tunable FPS controller and a shutter speed control next to that, which will allow you to double your shutter speed over your frame rate to give you some nice smooth natural motion blur. Your aperture is unfortunately locked at f1.8. The aperture will change between the lenses. The 13mm is f2.2 and the 120mm is f2.8. You do also have an ISO control, which I have locked at 1250, which is apparently where you will get the most dynamic range out of the camera. And finally, you have your white balance and tint settings, which I have locked at 5510. The only other thing that I would like to pair with these settings would now be an ND filter, so that I wouldn't have to crank the shutter or lower the ISO, meaning that I would still get the maximum dynamic range and natural motion blur. So now if we head into the settings, we can see that we also have more codec control, which is nice as these ProRes files will fill up your storage very quickly. So you could use a H.265 codec if you needed to capture some longer takes. It is important to note that you can record directly onto an SSD via the USB-C port. However, today I will just be recording to the internal storage. Then there's the resolution control. You have options for 4K, 1080 and 720p, but you'll probably just want to leave this at 4K. Then below that, you have an option to select the color space and we want to be choosing Apple Log. There are Rec. 709, Rec. 2020 and P3D65 options as well. You also have a display LUT built into the Blackmagic camera app, unlike the iPhone app, which will allow you to expose properly. And within the LUT selection, we can see there is a pre-installed Apple Log to 709 LUT. So there are plenty more features within this app that will help you with focus, exposure, and composition, but I won't go into those in this video. So for now, I'm just going to leave these settings as they are. So I thought I would just jump into a quick little section of test footage with a little bit of voiceover. So starting out, these are a few clips that I gathered on a recent trip to Thailand. There will be a travel video for this coming soon where I prominently shot this on the iPhone 15 Pro Max with a little bit of GoPro Hero 12 footage in as well. 
So starting out, this is the 13 millimeter wide angle lens, which I think looks pretty good. There is minimal lens distortion, as you can see on the horizon. And for being an overcast day, this still does look pretty nice. This is graded with the Apple Log2 Rec 709 LUT, which is available on the developer side of the Apple website. Um, and I'm, you know, pretty happy with this image, a little bit of color grading, a little bit of stylizing, and it's pretty good. Um, you can see when you zoom in on some of the things that are in the edge of frame, like that coconut, you can see it's just not very sharp. There's a little bit of grain, but overall it is pretty nice. And up next we have the 24 millimeter lens. I thought I'd shoot something and show an example with a lot of motion just to see what the rolling shutter is like. And if we play the clip, it is pretty good i feel like this was quite a high shutter speed obviously there's not a lot of motion blur going on and it is important to note that i wasn't using the blackmagic camera app i was using the built-in app just because it is easier to use i was moving about a lot and i actually did want the stabilization in there as well just so i wouldn't have to use something rubbish like warp stabilizer in premiere pro However, the colors in this image are really nice. This is also graded with the Apple Log to 709 version one LUT, which is available on the Apple dev website. And you know what? Pretty solid image. Um, ignore the reflection from the taxi window of my hand, but you know, really solid. I think that the colors are actually really, really nice. Everything pops and there's actually not a lot of grain in there there's not a lot of noise going on or any other artifacts in the image which is excellent this is the main lens on the camera which is the 1.8 i do feel like this is the best lens on the camera it's kind of like an all-rounder lens um but yeah super happy with this image and let's move on to the 120 mil which was actually a personal favorite of mine um this is a 2.8 lens which actually is a bit unfortunate as it doesn't let in as much light as the uh, 24 mil 1.8 so you will notice a quite a lot of grain and overall it's obviously not as sharp as the other two lenses um i don't know if this is just a quality issue or it is just the fact it is such a long lens squeezed into such a tiny format um as you can see the monkey's face here is in a little bit of a lower light situation and is actually given us quite a lot of grain which is unfortunate as this is such an overall beautiful image um, but you can see on the leaves they're obviously a lot more well lit and there's no grain on them um, and just talking about terms of dynamic range in this image is actually pretty solid I know the highlights in the background of the leaves are pretty clipped and um, there's been no adjustments on this other than the LUT so I've not brought the highlights down or anything like that but it's, it's actually not that bad. This was quite a low light situation, so it has bumped itself up to um, light the monkey quite well, which I think has resulted in the clipped highlights in the background. But you know, it, overall, it is a pretty, pretty solid image. So these are all relatively well lit images. So I'm gonna move on to some lower light images, and this actually really shows where the camera struggles. Moving on to some lower light scenarios. This is where the iPhone 15 Pro absolutely falls to pieces. Starting off, we have this quite a funky little shot from the uh, pier down in Phuket, Thailand. Um, this was shot with the 120mm lens, which is the lowest aperture lens, the 2.8 and i think that really shows that it's a 2.8 compared to the 1.8 it just does not let in enough light just to expose the image properly i know there is a lot of bright lights going on and there's a lot of dark elements going on so this is this is really pushing the camera to be honest but you can obviously see the grain is pretty horrendous i'm really not sure how much you could recover from this image in with for example davinci resolves uh, noise reduction software um, I will be giving it a go with stuff like this uh, when I come to make a travel film out of the footage I shot on this phone and just seeing how it goes. But it is still a really nice image um, and it is interesting that it has been captured by phone but th this is just where the phone starts to fall apart. And in the next shot we've got another low light image. This was shot at a boxing event. This is the 13mm lens which is faster than the 120mm lens in terms of aperture. And as you can see, the dynamic range is struggling a little bit as well. 
I'm not sure if that's just down to user error where I've not exposed correctly for the inside of the boxing ring. As you can tell, the highlights are quite sharp uh, on the fighters in there as well. Overall, it's a pretty decent image. Um, I am quite happy that the phone has captured an image of this quality. Um, but obviously, if you zoom into some of the darker areas, you will see a ton of grain as well. And it is just a shame that the highlights are a little bit clipped on the subjects. I don't think that will be that recoverable. Um, and let's move on to our final lens, which is the 24mm. Uh, this is using a lot of stabilization as well, as this was filmed out the back of this little tuk-tuk rickshaw thing. Um, and you'll see there is quite a lot of grain on the doors as well, as they are more underexposed than the bike in the foreground, obviously. But the doors are, yeah, they are pretty grainy. You could probably recover a lot of that in uh, DaVinci Resolve. And if you look at where surrounding the bike, you will see this weird lens artifact from the 24mm. This is quite common on iPhones to get this. And obviously there is a light shining directly into it. Um, we're not getting any amazing flares. We're just getting this jiggly little blob in the center of the screen. I think that has something to do with the image stabilization as well. Um, that is a bit unfortunate. I'm not sure how you would actually go about removing that um, effectively. However, this is still this is still usable. It's not like that 120 mil clip where you're you're kind of pushing the boundaries of what you can recover. I'm still happy with this. Um, if I was to bring my 6K Pro, for example, I don't think I could have got shots as decent as this, to be honest with you, that are exposed as nice as this and are as stable as this. Obviously, the 6K Pro doesn't have inbuilt image stabilization, um, and I just don't think it it would do as well as this. So it's actually quite impressive that you can get this kind of result with a phone. So to conclude this little section of test footage, I think it is safe to say that in correctly lit situations, the iPhone 15 Pro Max does perform really, really well. I think you can still tell that it is a mobile phone just due to the fact that you have no bokeh, you have barely any image separation from the background in terms of blur. They are pretty fast lenses and you'd expect to get a lot of uh, blur behind your subject, but that is obviously not the case. Also, as you would expect, they do perform pretty poorly in low light situations. They aren't gonna be as good as a full frame camera like the FX3, but for a phone, they are pretty solid and I'm interested to see what kind of result I can get out of this camera when i come to make a travel film obviously stick around and subscribe if you want to see that in the future i believe that'll be coming next week so i'll hand back to past me who is talking to future me which is me now so a bit of meception but yeah thanks for watching i'm just going to play a couple little clips with a nice bit of music just so you can kind of get an idea of what this camera can do Okay, well, thank you to Voice Over Me for that lovely little bit of test footage there. As I anticipated, the iPhone 15 did struggle within the low light situation, just due to the fact that the camera sensors are so small and just can't gather much light at all. So what do I think? Is the iPhone going to replace my cinema camera on a film set? Probably not anytime soon. Well, there is a few reasons, and the first one would be the fact that I would get laughed off of a set if I brought just this iPhone with me. And secondly, it just underperforms way too much in lower light scenarios. And thirdly, this camera just provides a better image in every single way and is far more adaptable to different shooting styles. Not to say that I will never shoot anything with one of these again, because I do believe they have their place within the camera world and can capture some amazing footage for example, I will be using this for my behind the scenes videos in the future and I will also be using it to make a travel film in Thailand as it is a perfect kind of thing, especially with ProRes, now that I can really dial in the look of my footage. So what do you guys think of the 15 Pro? Have you got one? Have you used it? What do you think of the footage? 
please let me know in the comment section down below. And if you think I missed anything notable about this phone, please let me know. But thank you guys for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out a lot. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.